Hi, I'm Herrick Kimball, author of the Planet Whiz Bang Idea Book for Gardeners. And I'm standing out here next to my garden on this uh, July 1st day. It's quite overcast, and that's okay because it has been extremely hot and dry here. I hope being overcast is uh, what happens before we get a couple of days or a day or even a few hours of a good soaking rain. The garden could use that. Nevertheless, this garden's doing pretty well. Uh, like all gardens, it is a mixed bag. Every year some things do well and some things don't do quite so well. Uh, I'm going to show you things that are off to a good start in this early summer garden. The garden has a long way to go, but we're off to a good start. Uh, we've already had peas and spinach and strawberries, and I have yet to plant things for fall like the uh, carrots and beets and broccoli and the swedes. Uh, these are things that I'll be planting very soon for fall harvest. So that kind of gives you some background. I'm going to, uh, this is a, an impromptu video, and um, I hope you'll be inspired. I hope you'll learn something. Uh, it's always fun to see other people's gardens and what they're doing, and that's the whole idea behind this little video. We're looking here at some trellises. These are Whizbang T-Post trellises, which are you can find in my book, The Planet Whizbang Idea Book for Gardeners. And right here we have peas on a trellis. Right here you have the Y fittings that I tell how to make in the book and that I also sell. They're on top of uh, a T-post in this instance with um, this concrete reinforcing wire. Got a one inch EMT top bar. And uh, this is a perfect trellis for growing peas. These are a uh, edible pod pea, snow pea I think we call them. Very good. Over here, I got a row of uh, strawberries. Let's uh, go back up, show you that right next to that pea trellis, I have another one here. Same principle, except this one is taller. Goes up about eight foot tall. And the peas I have are, uh, well, I can't remember what you call them. This is my garden uh, shed. Was been garden shed, which is also in the book. Now here you see the trellis. This is a permanent trellis, stays in place. Planted peas here this year. Last year I planted climbing lima beans. Before that I planted tomatoes. You can rotate your crops on a trellis. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, these are champion of England peas. And they grow very tall. If everything goes well, they should grow all the way up to the top. Uh, that's been my experience in the past. Okay. You can see I have a whole row of trellises here. This trellis, after the peas, looks empty, and it is empty. I decided to kind of leave this fallow, but then I decided, now I'm going to plant some uh, hills. You can see individual plantings of cilantro. Okay, so the, the trellis isn't being used, but the ground is. Now we're looking at some uh, cucumbers. These are bush cucumbers. I've grown cucumbers on a trellis. Works well. I've also grown the bush varieties, like you see here, and I kind of like them. They're compact. That's a 30-inch wide row. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff planted down that row, and I have the permanent plastic on each side. These, you see the tire sidewall there? That is part of the sidewall cloches that I make, and this shows the cloche. These are also in the book. Very simple device. Um, a tire, some number nine wire, and the uh, cover over the top. You can see the another cucumber there. And that's sidewall cloches for getting cucumbers and squashes, summer squashes, any kind of squash, and zucchinis. Here I have a zucchini. I've taken the cloche off. I've left the tire on. This zucchini has no bugs, as the cucumbers had no bugs. 
They may get some bugs here now that I've taken these covers off, but they are healthy plants. They can take a little bit of bug attack now with no problem. You see how that's off to such a great start there? Then I have a, a tunnel cloche down here instead of the tire sidewalls, so I have hoops. And let's take a look in here. Sorry if this is kind of all over the place. Filming with one hand. Look at that. I got some beautiful cabbages there. They are uh, Caraflex cabbage. And uh, these cloches, the fabric is held on with the Mark Albert technique. See the string? Goes all the way down the length of the cloche. And um, to that string is uh, the cloche is attached with clothespins, as you see here. This is in the book, Planet Whiz Bang, I do a book for gardeners. You pop the clothespin off. You got another one right here. And you can look and get into your cloche to get the little weeds. Okay. I've got uh, cabbage under here. I've got some kale on the end. I'll show you the nice healthy kales. I have some lesser cabbages, red cabbages down there. They're not as, looking quite as good as the Caraflex, but they're healthy. They just need to get along a little. Now here, over here you can see comfrey. I have, uh, this is July, I've harvested that off. It was up three foot high. Put it in my compost pile. Comfrey's great. The compost pile. Okay, I don't want to show you my onions. Here we have two rows in a 30 inch wide bed. And I have planted three rows in the past and it was hard to keep it weeded. As you'll see, these onions, there's no weeds in the bed. I keep them weeded with, uh, uh, by hand, of course, with, uh, well, I don't have it on me. My Planet Whiz Bang pocket weeder. I'll try to find that. But anyway, lots of onions. We like onions. These, these uh, are storage onions. Last us through the winter. Beautiful onions. Here I am in the corner of my garden, and I want to show you these trellises that I have. This is a string trellis in the foreground here. See the top bar? Why I got the Planet Whiz Bang Y holders, and uh, what I neglected to mention before is that these Y holders, or these trellises can be extended um, with these extensions, one inch EMT, and you see the, the top of the, um, T-post is right there. I have a screw that keeps it from sliding down. It's held on with hose clamps and it goes up and then the the Y holder just fits right into the top of the EMT. That's how that's secured in this instance. And at the top, instead of an EMT top bar, I have a length of sumac, which is kind of a weed tree and that's a good use for it. That, that top pole will last two, two seasons before it becomes too weak. And this is a string trellis. Strings are six inches apart for growing tomatoes. I tell how to do this in my Planet Whiz Bang Idea book for gardeners. And at the bottom, we have a wire. You really can't see it, but it's right there. It's been there for years. And you can see the strings are tied at the bottom, tied at the top. The Tomatoes are trained with uh, three trunks. I, I explain this in the book. Here's one. This is going to go onto this string. This is the center string, or the center trunk. And then this is the other trunk over here. Kind of, let me see if I can get a better view of that. Hope this is turning out well. But here's the other trunk shooting off, and I'm going to direct that up this string. So each uh, tomato gets trained up three strings that are six inches apart. And in this trellis span, I have three tomatoes. One, two, three. 
String trellising tomatoes like this is a lot of fun. If everything goes well, this trellis will be full, chock full, overflowing full. And these are uh, Matt's Wild Cherry. Cherry tomatoes work best for string trellising like this. Okay, in the background here, of course I have my garlic, which is going good. Garlic always does well for me. The garlic is uh, in a 30 inch bed. Well, everything's a 30 inch bed around here pretty much. And it's got black plastic. And over that's some straw. This bed, I got a couple parsleys here, but this bed is potato onions. It's my first year growing them. These are kind of a perennial onion. And you can see that uh, you look down here, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe more like bulbs. The onion, each onion consists of multiple bulbs. I'm gonna go over to my other tomato trellis and show you. Here I have some tomatoes uh, again on a trellis. These are indeterminate tomatoes, meaning they're gonna just keep on growing taller and taller until frost comes. I wanna focus in on this uh, trellis, this T-post trellis. And this T-post trellis with tomatoes has, well, there's three trellis spans here, has uh, this concrete reinforcing wire. And here, instead of training the tomatoes up a string very carefully, which is tedious but fun to do, um, these are just gonna grow. And as they grow, I'm going to keep the bottom leaves trimmed. You can see the bottom leaves are trimmed off. And I'm going to kind of weave these into the, it's gonna go that way. And then as it grows, I'll bring it back through this way. I'm gonna let this weave itself and I'm gonna to help to weave it. And if I have to, I'll tie a few strings on it. And, you know, we let these suckers grow unless they're growing out, uh, then I'll trim them off. But see, this one's gonna go up through that grow up through that. It's all going to kind of hold itself to the trellis, which is a nice way to do it. It works well for these. These are Tommy Toe and Juliet tomatoes. You can see in a, I think it's a five foot span there, I have just three tomato plants. Okay, and the, the plastic that you see down there is just the, uh, the cheap one mil stuff, and it's held on with these clips, binder clips, and there we have the string. Okay, and this is the Mark Albert technique for making a cloche and holding the cover adapted to hold a length of uh, plastic. And you see the string is tied to a stake at each end of this span. So, and then the tires, the sidewalls, throw those on when the uh, tomatoes were planted so it could provide a little extra um, weight to hold that down. Probably wasn't needed, but I have lots of sidewalls. They're very handy. Now, in the middle of this span, five foot span, you can see I put a stake and I tied it just to give it a little support. These will take the wind moving when we get wind doesn't hurt them. But these are tall, eight foot tall, just a little under eight foot. You can see how I bent the concrete wire over the top and uh, works really well. Very sturdy structure, not going anywhere. It's gonna last for years. And that top bar is simply held in place with a Y holder, which I tell how to make in the book. I wanna show you this. This is my uh, hops pole. Same principle, T-post in the ground, one inch EMT. And I had, of course it, you know, a hops pole, this, you could make this thing all the way up to those wires, the electric wires, and it would, it would grow up there. But for one hops pole in my garden, this is kind of nice. You can see I have a, a birdhouse on there and well, the swallows are in there. You want swallows around your garden there. Voracious bug eaters. Okay, here are determinate tomatoes, plants. I don't usually grow determinate tomatoes, but this year I did. I can't remember what kind these are. 
offhand, but they're very uh, blight resistant. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them in a 15 foot bed. This bed has black plastic on it. And then I put, I just the other day was given a whole bunch of old hay. And that's what that is, hay. I mulched it with hay. So when these grow up and have all their tomatoes, they'll be, rest on the hay instead of black plastic. Uh, but there's no weeds. Black plastic keeps the weeds down really well. Here I have potatoes. The, these are the Green Mountain potatoes. Never grown Green Mountain, but they're growing very well. On the other hand, here I have dark red Norlands, and I've got skips. They, uh, what plants are there are growing well, but it's discouraging when you get those skips. Now I got one more thing to show you. These are Elba's. This is not the one more thing I want to show you. Elba potatoes doing pretty well. Okay, hang on. We're going to check this other thing. Last year, in this black plastic, in these holes, which are one foot apart, we planted cabbage. And this was an experiment. This large sheet of plastic with holes in it, <clears throat> which I have mixed feelings about. It's not something I'm going to pursue too much longer in my garden. But this here is neat. It's actually five cabbages that grew by their own out of the stump or the remainder of root that was in this black plastic all winter long. We harvested the cabbage in the fall and out of this particular one all these cabbages have grown. Haven't watered them, haven't done a thing with them. They're looking really good and this, this one's starting to head so that's neat hmm now here's a garden implement you should know about and this is not the prettiest example this is actually my very first whiz bang wheel hoe that i made it is the prototype from which you know i, I derived and came up with a whole concept <clears throat> so and i sell the kits and this is you got your oscillating blade. You can see I didn't paint this. I didn't stain the handles. So it's all rusty. It's not very attractive. And you can see I got a long bolt sticking out here. And you can also see that tire is flat. Doesn't hold the air. But this thing works remarkably well. I use it uh, in my potato rows. You can see the handle design is from the old Planet Junior. Handle design. And that's the that's the Planet Whizbang wheel hoe. Like I said, the very first, the prototype. I still use it. Now over here. I want to show you one last thing. I think I said one more thing a while back, but I mean it this time. This is, you can see the black plastic. There's some more onions in a bed. I have my heavy plastic in the rows between the beds. And in this instance, and it's held in place with the Mark Albert system of a string stretched tight and then some clothespins. Hold that in place. Very nicely. In between these two walkways, I have an occult, occultation cover. This cover has been over this bed since last fall. And uh, I'm just uncovering it now to see what the bed looks like. You can see there's no weeds. Any seeds that were in the top there have germinated and died. And this is, this soil is moist and crumbly. I don't have to till it up. I can just I could just go with my hand here and uh, there's a rock. We throw those in the set in the walkway. But I have some ant activity over here. See how nice this soil is. 
beautiful underneath there. Now we haven't had rain for weeks, literally. And my beds that are uncovered are quite dry. But here, when I want to plant this bed, pull the cover off and it's ready to go. That's the beauty of an occultation cover. I've got one more thing that I want to show you before I close down this little tour. I know I've said one more thing before, but I mean it this time. And what I want to show you is this. I found my Whizbang Pocket Cultivator. And uh, it was actually in my back pocket earlier when I was looking for it. I was looking in my front pockets. Okay, so people look at this and they say, oh, that's just a fork. But it's not just a fork. It's a Whizbang Pocket Cal... Uh, not calculator, cultivator. <laughs> And um, it's, I actually cut it down a little bit and I put this bulbous end on, which makes all the difference in the world and comfort and use. And I tell about this in my Planet Whizbang idea book for gardeners. I'm going to switch hands here so I can show you just how nicely this little tool works. I'm right handed. And uh, it's, uh, you can see how dry these beds are. This bed of onions, I have kept the weeds down using this tool primarily. It allows you to get, you know, up close if there, if there were a weed there. And I looked through this bed for a weed, I couldn't find one. It's, I could snag it and uh, go underneath it. Here you can see I can go underneath this plastic. Weeds tend to grow at the juncture of the plastic to the bed and uh, that that kills them. So. Uh, the old timers said in your garden you should be stirring, stirring, always stirring the soil, keep the weeds from getting a foothold, and this pocket cal cultivator will do that. We could use a rain here, we seriously need a rain. Um, onions are doing remarkably well, even though it's been dry. You know, there's subsoil moisture down there, and th they'll send the roots down and get it. But anyway, this is the pocket, Whizbang Pocket Cultivator, a very handy tool. Don't go out to your garden without one. And if you need specifics on size and everything, see how nice that fits right in my hand. And I can get it down close here if I need to dig down deep. See the moisture is down there. Or I can just, I mean, this is a great tool. 